and welcome back to another episode of Foxy's Breakdown, the show where we watch either really bad mud show wrestling or surprisingly good mud show wrestling. But the caveat is that I have to critique the referee. And the reason for that is, for those that don't know, I am a pro wrestling referee here in Ireland. And I wanted to put my knowledge to a bit of use, if possible. Now, uh, this this match today, this, this show today is going to be like a one match episode. So you're more than welcome to watch along with us or watch in your own time. But in the meantime, please do, please like and subscribe. Help us out with the channel. It does help out a lot. Uh, send in your suggestions for other matches that we could watch and react to. Or f- if you feel like you want to be on the show, please by all means let us know. Well, this match today that we're going to be watching is uh, from, <laughs> it's a six person tag team match. And it's uh, featuring the faction of AWOL versus Sean James, Ronan, and Joseph Cardinal from Future Wrestling. No no association to it. The RPG. So, yes. yes. It's very yeah. different spelling. So it's similar but legally distinct. Yes. Let me just uh, clarify that. It's not, the, not from the RPG no. <laughs> that no. we do on the Nerds Us channel. Yes, Which you were there's a at, fictional yeah. future wrestling, and apparently now there's a real one. Who yeah. knew? Who, Who fucking knew? knew? Well, yeah, this is a six-person tag. We're going to start watching, and you can w- react along with us and let us know. Um, boys, if you're ready, three, two, one, play. Oh, shaky cam. Oh, this is getting off great with shaky cam, and it's viewed in, zoomed in yes. way too much. Apparently, Paddy Morrow is annoying. I can guess that the ring announcer is going out with one of the wrestlers. Yay! Yay! There's no one that good, no good looking is going to wrestle. Allegedly, yes, allegedly. I'll tell you allegedly. one thing you can skip leg day every single day from his fucking life. And so is the referee. He's wearing skinny yeah. jeans. He's wearing skinny jeans. Mm-hmm. Is that one of the most egregious things for you as a re- that a referee can do is wear skinny jeans? Yeah. That's the, yeah. Yeah. No, like, it just, you should not, like, you may be a twig, but don't, don't show that you're a twig. Because <laughs> what, what's stopping the wrestler from pushing you or breaking you in any second? Hmm. By wearing, I'm like, proper, this is not... wear proper slacks, proper yeah. referee short, and present yourself as the authority and but if you're presenting yourself like anybody in hipster from down the road like, yeah then what's what's stopping it even these scrawny kids like from beating the crap out of you so what you're saying is that like you're saying that the referee should have their trousers that was just saying proper trousers yeah proper okay. trousers. all right not skinny jeans mm. Maybe you like how these uh, these kids are thugs because they're wearing face masks. Yeah. Which, which is remarkably like, before their time because this is in 2019. Yeah. These, guys, these lads literally saw the future. Yeah. <laughs> the future of future wrestling. Yes. Literally. And and it's a pandemic crowd as well because it's fuck all people here. Hmm. <laughs> I was just thinking there as well, there's no one going to be able to do top rope moves on the other side of the ring because they'll probably crack their head off one of the lights. Yep. Or the disco ball. Oh, these, these type of shows are a nightmare. Hmm. Because, yeah, no roofs, but they're a disaster. What? I remember CCW doing a show inside a pub once like that. Yep. I'm sure somebody oh, yeah. broke, one of the, broke one of the slates at the top. I can't really remember. Wait, I, I did a, a show for CCW on Patrick's Day. And we were in a small little venue. And within, by the second match, someone had gone through the roof twice, and another person had broken three of the panels mm. on the roof. So, yeah, that was an eventful uh, few matches. And no one could okay. do anything. And these were the tall guys. Mm. Like, this was like Executioner, who's like, yeah, what? Six for something. Mm. Yeah, man, he's, a, he's a big man in fairness. Yeah. So imagine him just trying to lift someone for a scoop slam. 
Because like the feet just like <laughs> <laughs> like you barely lift you. It's like boom. Oh crap. Yeah. Wait, I couldn't hear it at the start. Who was the dude with the pants and the red top? I, I don't think they'd ever said. <laughs> I don't think we ever got right. to that point. Yeah, and I don't think he's involved in this match either. I think he's just out there for the crack. Yeah, I thought he was involved in the match. I thought he was one of the <laughs> He might have just had to warm the crowd up, to be honest. And let me say, say this crowd really does need warming up. Yes, they do. Let him go. Well, Oh god, they've got tables for their pints. Oh. I was about to say, it's like that uh, promotion you see in Australia. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like they were just sitting around, like proper like family function. Like just having their meals and their like their pints. Like I, I'm, I'm, such, I'm such in, like, in two minds about that because like as much as I appreciate just being able to like, you know, have the venue activity, I do want to be lazy and have a table in front just for have drinks. <laughs> it takes a look off the face though, that's the trouble. Like you can never win. Like, don't get me wrong, if you're trying to do socially distant kind of thing, that's fantastic. Because you have a yeah. table between you and, you and the crowd. Absolutely, yeah. So, well, you know full well, though, like, we had that kind of thing over here. Mm. Some of the boys are going to fuck with the crowd in that, that sense. Oh, absolutely. You know, are slamming on the table in front of them. It's mm. like, oh, give me a point. Oh. Like, like I said, like if you have like table like that, like again, I may this is the second time I mentioned it, but Paddy Murrow will literally just like throw himself on the table, just flap around like a fish. It's because he can. It's because he fucking can. All right. Yep. Just cause. Yeah. There's no reason for it. Just because. Now it's that almost every single person wrestling in this match mm. have a short on. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that. The dude that has the shirt on with the beard is going for the most basic look you can possibly think of. Yeah. I hate that look with lads. Fellas who have beards and long hair always do the exact same thing. It's like... Why... Like, who's in what team? Mm. That, yeah. That's my... My... Yeah. My mm. Like, if you know your, your opponents are wearing a certain... Going for a certain aesthetic... Don't match them. Mm. Wear something different. The only one that actually stands out properly is the guy with the orange tights. Yeah. I can very clearly tell he's meant to be the baby face. And like this, like, I don't. Is he meant? To, these two are meant to be like this kind of like his, like, uh, I don't know, like allies against this common, common foe type of deal. But that's literally only me guessing, like, going from like the brief few minutes I've seen. Possibly, but like, it's. That walked through off there. Is that a oh, it's bandana. No, nah. it's the bad head. Yeah, whatever your man is wearing. There's you. There he is again. Open the. It's that man. Ah, come on. Oof. We're saying the last match earlier that looks like uh, that the last place looked like a pub. Yeah. Like the functioning room of a pub. This actually is the functioning room of a pub. Yeah. Pub, yeah. Like, I'm happy to match the day to be on the corner there. It's also funny watching to see uh, who out of the group is like inexperienced. Because mm. normally that is the case for a faction. There's always someone yeah. that's less experienced, so hide away a faction. I, I, I'm going to give a guess that the fellow is changing. I don't know why. I just have a feeling that he's the. The, the I, I, I don't think it's the one that like actually probably look like children. <laughs> that, that'd be my guess. Like something tells me that the guy with the long hair, uh, like the blonde hair, he's the least experienced in terms of wrestling, and he's doing the headlock on the wrong side. Uh, yeah, no, it's not. yeah, oh, he's probably the talker out of the group. I'd say he's the talker. Yeah. Ah, come on. Actually, there's really as well. The the, every single one of them has resting boots on, except for your man. Now I can land here. Oh. <laughs> that was fun. Just run in, suplex. No. 
the worst person I ever. I do. I do remember the worst person ever take to ever. I took. I ever took a suplex up from was uh, Marion Armstrong, because he would do a snap suplex every single time. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> After a while, I. <laughs> This is a rope. <laughs> Quite literally. Who wants the alliance on? Spring. Oh, I, no. Not with those ropes, mate. Oh, God. This is not it. Uh, oh, he did. That was very, that was very clean. It was credit. I guess this is what he usually does with top rope, but he ain't doing it tonight. I love the fact he's just trying to find some level of logic in this match when there is none. No, he's trying, I don't trying to work at the mechanics of this. No, it's just six yeah. guys doing moves. Abandon the pretense. Yeah, I know. Oh, man, that, that dude in the ring that just came in doesn't look like he's left the weight entirely. To be fair, you're... Yeah. Alright, here we go. Now, what about, what about wrestlers wearing skinny jeans? Because that dude looks like he's wearing skinny jeans. Wrestlers wearing skinny jeans? Eh, it depends. It mm. really depends on the aesthetic you're going for. Yeah. It suits so, your like, character. If you're part of a faction and you're all wearing relatively the same things, that's fine. If you're matching. Your you're tag. Your style. Your Makes sense. That'd be like someone tagging with, with Thatcher and wearing the same stuff that he wears. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Especially if you're similar build, why not? Mm. Like him and Fran together look perfect because they have similar bodies and mm. they can wear the same things. Yeah. It's just a shame no one will book Fran. <laughs> <laughs> I am of course talking about Fran as if he's a real, <laughs> if he's a real character. This is a hypothetical. <laughs> like, and I like Fran. It, like, I, I would love to see him t- tag with, with Tasha. But I don't know if people actually book him. That's the problem. Yeah. Like, again, I, I don't want to cast aspersions on, on Lad in the Ring, especially they're doing something I will probably never do. But if you, if you don't have a sp- if you have a good spine buster in your arsenal, like, just hell. Well, I, 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 I've been under the assumption basically since the mid 2000s where I started to like, like want to dress him properly. Unless you're sure Aaron Anderson, you don't do a proper spine monster because he's the only one I've ever seen that does a really good spine monster. Well, yeah, like he, like his, the way his technique is perfect. But then again, like Aaron Anderson is one of the best wrestlers who have ever lived. So it's very hard to like live up to his, to his expectations. But you can get the technique down right, you can get the fundamentals. Mm. Not the way he did it where like he lifted them up and then landed on his own knees. It's like, no. <laughs> I don't know. I think, do you know what I think I loved about it was the fact that he would put the hand on the chest. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It looked like he was really forcing him down into the ring. That's it's exactly it's the, the way he was doing. presentation of it, yeah. Like, if, ah, come on. Ah, for fuck's sake, hit him. Take him properly. It's like he stopped himself midway just like, eh. You know, what you're saying? You, you know what you were saying? Like he had the headlock on the wrong side. He was doing that move on the wrong side again as well. Yeah. Because it's completely off. Like, he's just off position completely. Yeah. And he's not even laying in the stuff right now. Is he wearing kick pads or is he just wearing really long socks? Long socks. No, there's, there's knee pads ah. on the well. Right. Okay. Yeah, come on. Ah, come on, lad. You should be able to fucking distract for your team. Yeah. Even, even where yeah, like, the, the lad's not fucking doing it, it should have been on the opposing team. Yeah. You can referee distracted. They sh- so realistically, like, if they're goaded into the ring, they sh- Oh, I actually like that. Ooh! That's I actually good. like that. Yeah, okay, bro. Oh, come on, what the hell? Get out of the Rip. ring. And they're trying to tell him, like, stop counting. Stop counting. No, you get the hell out. <laughs> they just gave him to the spot. Oh, God, lads, cringe. <laughs> it took so long setting it up, the referee said, just get the fuck out. 
Why whip him toward us? What do you do that for? Jesus, man. You look bitch. Go on over there and tag yourself in. <laughs> You've had enough. Go on, go for it. <laughs> yeah, you're the paperweight of the group, but fuck, I fancy my chance against the two bikers. Fuck, come on, let's do it. <laughs> I'm wearing a shirt, I'm a big boy. Yeah, this is a bit of a deep cut, but they look like the lads that use the rest of the CC over the call it. Ah, fucking live! Come on. What is all this? This there's a lot of this going on. This this is a very strange match. Like there's actually no storytelling at all. There's no flow to the match whatsoever. It's like did you they've they've broken their momentum like three times already in this match. And that guy keeps getting the shit kicked out of him. <laughs> Every hot tag he's done has been terrible. <laughs> it's like a Oi! Oh no! Oh, oh fuck! Where? What in the hell? I hate that, I do. I hate that running across. Oh, okay. Uh. You lose your momentum by doing that, by jumping yeah, over. Yeah. That's it, it has to be a quick drop into that move. You don't just do it for an extra spin for the crack. Ooh, hello? Ah, there's a mile me. off. Come oh, on! Yeah. Take this hand. Oh. Hit him! Oh my god, that looks so awful. Oh, even worse. I hate that move. <laughs> it was just... Everyone's doing this. The lads were in the back and they just went like, everyone's gonna do everyone's moves. And that's exactly what this is. Like, and now uh -huh. this is where everyone gets the most. Aaron, you gotta kick, and Aaron gets the most move. It's a dive. Everybody has to stand there and be a prick. Yeah. And all of them are doing as well as doing that is it's a V trigger that Kenny Omega does. It was like yeah, two yeah, legs yeah. in the stand fucking leaf. And it's a popular thing to do. And and uh, make it obvious lads that you got the ring, yeah. Go for it. Yeah, oh, of course, yeah. What the hell? Oh, oh no. Hell? Oh no. Oh they were oh, meant to catch no. him, okay. The clever spot, but goddamn, like a lot of setup. Yeah, it's too much, like it's far yeah. too obvious. I actually, that's one of my most hated spots in wrestling, the whole way. Oh no, he's coming! Got around, the yeah. Over the ring, I hate it. Flipping blockbuster. No, no. At least you remember who no. the legal no. man was. No. That's not, that's not how you get there. It is, but like... Oh! Oh! No! Oh, oh that no. could've gone so much Oh my god! Call it. Call it. Call it. Your winners, the team of Joe. God, that was so close. That wasn't the finish. That wasn't the finish. You sure? Yeah. Okay, so you have to explain that to us then. How so? How can you uh, discern that? That wasn't the finish because, like, you hit the move. Mm -hmm. Because of the awkward landing, the kid is not loopy. So, referee went for the count, tried to stop himself, but because he wasn't kicking out, he had to call it. Reluctantly. That was not the finish. He actually does look loopy as well. Yeah. <laughs> he was supposed to kick out, and then something else was supposed to happen. Jeez. No, that that was awful. That that kid could get really hurt with that one. Yeah, I suppose like that match is a very good lesson into why now again I think that came across very quickly that those lads were not adequately trained, and if they were, then the training that they're doing was not up to scratch. It wasn't proper. It wasn't proper no. training. Like that was literally like okay, you're taught how to do moves, and here's kind of what you have to do you have mm. to do a cut off you have to do a heat and you can go into a finish but mm. there was no logic in this yeah because even if you have the basics down the structure of it has to change in terms of not only for like a single match but when you go to a tag then it's changed even dra more drastically because you have to rely on other more moving parts 
But when it gets yeah. to a six person, very easily can that be a, could become a cluster. Mm. And it's very apparent there that it became a cluster. Because uh, shots aren't being laid in when they're supposed to. People are forgetting their spots or people not knowing how to utilize the time. Mm. It's like the referee, to his credit, actually was doing a fair bit. Like he was enforcing the rules at times. The finish, yeah, I like that. The finish definitely wasn't there, uh, definitely wasn't planned. Not, not a chance was that like the actual planned finish. Um, there was definitely something like, else must be that, that was a couple of centimeters away from being, yeah, a proper disaster there, too. Yeah, yeah, he don't, I don't know why, like, he had to lift him up as well. So clearly, he couldn't get the momentum he usually gets with that move because yeah. the roof hindered it. Like, he probably would have been able to do it, but he was probably thinking halfway through it. Oh, what happens if he hits his feet off it? Yeah. And, I'm actually just seeing a freeze frame of it there, and at one point the, the, the kid's head is like literally perpendicular to the apron. Yeah. So like if he had not like actually shifted his weight, he was landing on his neck. Hundred percent. Like I'm just quickly like jumping back just to see. I think he may have the kid, the lad may have bonked his head on the apron on the second move. Perhaps. Well, to be fair, he does feed up immediately for the last for the last move. So I don't know if he if that not going to be there, or was it the fact that like he had such a close call on the third one? See, because the referee came, he was counting at one, two, and as you come down for the three, you see his shoulder kind of stop. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah, because he's actually like he was expecting a kick out. Yeah, he, he's not. He's not actually ringing for the. He's not actually calling for the bell as he would normally. Yeah. He is actually checking your man to see if he's all right. Yeah, see what I mean now. Because, like, even the two boys out there, they're, they're reacting, but it's more a case of, like, shit. Mm. Now, to, his, to, to, the, to the kid's credit, like, he actually does save himself at the pivotal point by, like, getting his arms like arms up. Yeah, but, but that's purely, like, like yeah, he, I, I think he, his head does slap off the apron direction, off the ring. You can kind of see it. In yeah. The yeah. Fucking hell. But I guess I'll show you, like, again, I'll, I'll ask you that question, Foxy, because, like, oftentimes you do get that where, like, you, like, you know yourself, like, pe- people are trainees, people are, are fresh and raw and trying to, like, put on a match that they want to put on. And, I, I, like, they feel like they have to impress and put on epics every single time. But is there a case, like, and again, this is an obvious, like, rhetorical question here, but surely it's a case of, like, you wrestle the match that you're capable of rather than the match that you want to have. Is that kind of the way you would as a trainee? That's what you should be doing, but... <laughs> More often is the case that trainees don't understand that. And, yeah, yeah. and that's not knock. It really isn't because like all of us do it. Like I've done it several times, like when I was wrestling. But it, it's it should be wrestled to your ability and stay in your ability mm. rather than I, I I said this on an old podcast I did years ago when I was really I'm still heavily against it. A lot of the indie stuff where it's just more just doing stuff to be flashy than it to make sense. Mm. And I said then, and it's clearly been shown now, that eventually it'll get to the point where no one will care how to actually do it properly, is if they can just about get the move right. Mm. And sure, if someone didn't break their neck, that's fine. I mean, it's all right then. A lot of the indie wrestling years ago, we say the box and all that PWG type thing kind of ruined it and killed the whole build up to these moves. Yeah. Like they, they kill no yeah. psychology anymore to get from A to B. Yeah. There's no psychology anymore from get to A, B, C, D. It's just A and then to D and then a finish. Yeah. Probably by a roll up. Yeah. Like it, especially for the likes of um, even, more often it is the case where like people tend to sacrifice the effectiveness of their finisher for the sake of okay, I need to hit these spots to get a pop. Mm. It's like, no, you don't. Like you don't need you can you can have a good match and not sacrifice your your finish. Yeah. Like, if you're not gonna 
if you're building drama, you can hit it, but it can be a point in the match where both you is, both participants are exhausted. Yeah. Like to the point where like no one can move. And then there's a delayed pin. Mm. Then it's like one, two, big kick out drama. But rather like that's fine. But if you're doing it, it's like like books are a prime example of it. Like how they've basically killed like the effectiveness of a super kick mm. in the last few years alone. It's just like it it's no longer a finisher, it's a transition move now. Yeah. And, and that wasn't the case like years ago. Like Shawn Michaels, like Sweet Chin Music, that was a finisher. And now, because everyone likes to emulate their, their favorite wrestler, they almost tarnish basically those moves. Mm. Yeah. Should we start there with the V trigger being done twice in the space of 10 seconds? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. You can. St- you can do these moves, but if you can't do them effectively in the right placement, then it's not worth doing. Yeah. Like I would rather Less, see three like, really good forearms than ten punches that look shit. Yeah, definitely. Like slow Less is more. Deliver. Less is more, and that doesn't seem to be a thing in a lot of indie wrestling anymore. No. It's more is more. It, it comes down to the mentality of the trainers as well. Because mm. if the trainers are just happy enough, it's like, oh, yeah, he's, he seems solid enough. Like, but he's not. He knows how to do moves, but can he work a match? Can he string a, uh, a psychologically like sound match, like basic match? No. Then, no, you, you need to put him with someone that can. Yeah. That, that's the whole adage of like, Trainees should go against experienced guys in order to learn. Because if you have trainees against trainees, they're, it's bound to mess up. It, yeah. There's no two ways about it. Yeah. Like, even if you're the most solid of like the top two like trainees, something's going to go wrong. Yes. Yeah. That's just the way it is. That's why, like, and you can only progress so far if you work trainees against each other. Mm-hmm. You have to have the experienced person against a trainee that way they can learn and come up and you learn on the go too you learn by having a match and then analyzing that and reviewing here's what i did wrong here's what i did right and like i said like the the kind of contenders brand when they do have like those kind of matches on it shows because they are almost always around the same kind of length you always have the rookie lose which is fine there's nothing wrong with the reputation there it's it's your debut you don't have to necessarily win your first match it helps if you do but well, a strong often, outing but a strong outing exactly you make them look good and it's a case of like, you understand that you lost, but you're up against an experienced like individual, mm-hmm. you're expected to lose. That's type of deal. That's there's a logic, there's a certain rationale to it. But it also means that when you do have someone who is really red hot and breaks that kind of trend, and someone who is what does win his debut, people go, Oh, this guy's on, onto something. If he if he can put away Sammy D or you put yeah. away Paul Tracy, we're like, it's just gonna sit bottom there. You go, Oh, that makes a difference. Yeah, because you know someone's breaking the mold, and that's that's where you get people over that way. So there is a certain logic to it. I think like that match reminded me of a certain match we have had on this island. And one of the people on our is, is redacted. Um, so I won't, uh, I think we know, which, I, I think me and Foxy might know which one we're talking about because we're both here for this. Um, and the difference was that that match was purely just doing moves. There was absolutely no ring psychology. There was absolutely no idea of how to put a match together. It was literally doing moves for the sake of doing moves. And the difference was that in certain crowds, they're not reset. They are uh, not receptive to that, and they will just cheer for whatever it is. But our crowds are receptive. They do want that emotional engagement. They do want that little bit of yay boo to actually get them into it. And almost straight away, like five minutes into the match, crowd turned on the match completely. Mm-hmm. You know, I like I, I, so much more that I was making fucking plane noises so the guy would fall off the fucking top rope again. Like that's literally what I was doing, just fucking entertain myself at that point. Yeah, you know I, what I mean? I That's how bad that match was, where it was slagging off the people involved. And then they are fucking doing like fucking spinning tombstones and going like, why? What is the point of that move? <laughs> even even something as simple as, um, you know, every single heavy shot, kick, hmm. slap, elbow or kick these days have to have the slap that goes along with it. Yeah. So it sounds like that they really connected. 
that happened so many so many times in matches now that it has lost all meaning. Whereas yes. if you did it twice during a match, match there you go. Yeah. one lad did it and then the other fella did it, it would work so much better. But 100%. these days, everyone has to do a tie slap. Yeah. And do we really need to do a tie slap like, for everything that happens? It is. like From a wrestler standpoint, like one of, the, one of my pet peeves, and I know a couple of others that really hate it as well, is the headbutt. Oh, the headbutt yeah. Is not yeah. The headbutt is a thump. Yeah. So all this business of like, I make slap. No. Yeah. <laughs> that, that actually yes it sounds like gruesome when it happens but it doesn't make any sense because if you're hitting somebody that hard with your head your head should be cracked yeah yes. it, shouldn't, it shouldn't slap <laughs> uh, no it, it should be a thump it should be like thump. oh yeah oh like like if you're gonna give a headbutt hit them hit them in the neck hit them in the like the chest like fuck mm. it like they're they should be able to fucking take that kind of shot. Don't have to fucking love them square in the bleeding head and like hemorrhage it's yourself. Isn't that why isn't that way about it? Yeah, yeah. in New Japan. Yeah, yeah, that's the reason he had to yeah. leave for a couple of years, isn't it? Yeah. Full yeah. on headbutts. Yeah. Gave himself a bleeding aneurysm. Mm. So yay. Uh, yeah. Uh sorry. <laughs> I like that watching like I a, a bunch of like sometimes. I literally just like revert to the like, old man yells at spots. <laughs> yeah. True. Now, but refereeing is like actually like very good. Um, apart from the pants, but the but enforcing the rules when he could. Yeah. Like, Given the counts, counting them to get out. Like choke was happening. He was counting that, so he's right on top of him. Uh, tag was made. He's trying to get the opponents out. That they had to give up their spot. Like mm. the. I yeah. said it. It's like they're they're telling him to stop the count, and he's not, and he's right. He shouldn't mm. stop the count. Yeah. Work with him. Obviously, you haven't told him what you're gonna do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If you told him beforehand, then he should be able to work with you. Mm. It's like, come on, lads, get out, get out of the ring. One man in, rest out. It's like, right, I'm gonna have to count you. Right, they're already halfway through their spot. One. Yeah. Two. Three, they're getting out. Four, they're out. There you go. Mm. You work with them. And there you go. That's the spot save. But, yeah. The, but, again, the finish, def, uh, there's not a chance that that was, like, the planned finish. Not a chance. But, By the way, that match was still, like, 17 minutes long. Like, <laughs> if there was more to that match, I think I'm okay. I can yeah. live without it, like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> so, Yeah. Again, that has been uh, a match from a six man tag from Future Wrestling, and that was from 2019. So, fairly, I, I can rest assured that the match quality is a lot better on our Future Wrestling, just so you know. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we have a guy called fucking Bobbin on the roster, like, and even he's putting in fucking bangers, you know. <laughs> ours is like an RPG, it's fictional, like, completely. Exactly, my point still stands. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm solidifying your point, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, please. Yet again, like, subscribe. Please send us your comments. Let us know what you thought. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, if you have suggestions for other matches that we should watch and react to, or if you feel that you would like to be on the show, please let us know. And um, until then, this has been uh, Foxy's Breakdown. I've been your host, Foxy, and we'll see you again in the next one.